Okay, it's time to uh, fabricate a small paper box for uh, some of the capacitors that mount on top of the chassis with uh, leads that run underneath. This is the existing box. I'm not going to try to open this up or reuse anything. Here, other than maybe this bracket, I'll look and see if I've got something else in my uh, scrap uh, box that I can use to mount this back to the uh, chassis. Looks like a uh, piece of uh, hardware, just a L bracket with some tape mounted to the uh, box itself. And I may or may not try to reprint the uh, label right here, Cornell Electric. We'll see. I may play around with that also. Here's a look at the uh, capacitor bank if you were uh, looking at it from underneath the chassis back up. And you can see there's uh, five capacitors in there. They're all the same value, 0.1 microfarad. They're all rated at 200 volts according to the schematic. I'll go back with um, 0.1s, 400 volt or uh, 600 volt. And I'm going to add one additional 0.1 microfarad cap. And uh, that's just to get rid of this guy here, C2, that resides on the uh, underneath side of the chassis. So uh, that'll help clean up some of the clutter that we have. So one more look here at the uh, box. And uh, let me show you the steps that we'll take to uh, recreate this. There's a really neat program that I've used before that I've referenced in uh, my prior videos. But it's uh, templatemaker.nl and it's a, a free program and you can actually create your boxes and uh, save them to a PDF file. And uh, that's what I've done here. So uh, this particular box, I've changed the dimensions uh, ever so little, but uh, it's about two and one fourth inches high, two inches wide, and I think I went one half of an inch wide. Uh, this other one is just uh, maybe just a bit over one half. But uh, it's rather, rather close. And uh, you can see the dark lines. That will be my uh, cut lines. And the uh, dash lines are the fold lines. And uh, you can see that uh, here. This is one I've already cut out of paper. So uh, this becomes my uh, template. Or this can be my template. Then I was just looking through some of my cardboard. And uh, this is a piece of cardboard that I actually used to uh, kind of deflect uh, toner lacquers um, or aim toner lacquers in the past. And uh, how perfect to give it some uh, patina and some age. So um, I'll cut this uh, somewhere, probably this side uh, being the outside. And you can see with the old uh, toner lacquers that were sprayed, it. Uh, gives it that old look. I'm going to go outside and uh, spray this, but uh, I'm going to use some of my uh, multi-purpose adhesive and uh, spray the back side of my template. And then I'll lay it down here on top of the cardboard and then we'll cut around it. Okay. I think that's uh, good enough here. Let me go ahead and uh, try to crease everything at these uh, lines right here. I think last time I went inside and grabbed my uh, pizza cutter. Let me see if I can sneak in here and grab this uh, pizza cutter real quick and get out of the house. First the crock pot, now the pizza cutter. Well, I got called again, but uh, I think the crock pot was the biggest one. You know, they actually make a tool for this. But uh, I only do this once every uh, year or two, so I think this will uh, serve me well. Let me go ahead and finish up these other locations here. Let's uh, get this thing folded and take a look at the uh, box and go ahead and get started with uh, getting the uh, new modern day capacitors in here. Well, it looks like the uh, pizza cutter did help a little bit. You see uh, one mistake that I made, but uh, no big deal. I wanted to use this side here on the cardboard. I actually should have placed my template on the other side. This was a little darker, but that still is aged up. 
and uh, if there's not enough uh, patina there I may go back and uh, just spray a little bit more toner lacquer anyway kind of got in a hurry there because uh, some rain was moving in let's go ahead and get this folded up now and see what it looks like okay I think that'll work just fine let me go look at this mounting hardware and uh, see if I've got another small L bracket um, as such. I'm pretty sure I do. I think I found exactly what I needed here. I was just looking through uh, my jump box here and a, a single curtain rod bracket and I'll place a little epoxy on this side and attach it to the uh, new cardboard so it'll go in as such and then I'll uh, cut it off, drill a new hole make it uh, made up here with the existing hole locations and I think we'll be good to go alright here's the uh, bracket that uh, I cut and uh, I had mentioned I'll just use some epoxy here and get that back into the uh, box I need to uh, get the uh, box glued here on the side and of course the uh, bottom and then uh, drill a hole here before I do any of the uh, gluing, I want to just do a, a dry fit. When I was primarily doing All-American 5 radios, I bought a bunch of uh, capacitors back in the day. And uh, you can see these are rated at 400 volts, 0.1, so these will work perfect. Okay, you guys can see what I've done here. I've just uh, twisted the uh, ground connections here together in pairs of two. Then I'm going to just bring these in closer as such and uh, connect these leads at some point here solder those up into a common ground connection and as I mentioned all these will have individual leads going to their uh, connection points as uh, called out on the schematic itself I'm going to be using some cloth covered pushback wire and it's a lot thinner than the other wire that I have but it should uh, work well. I don't have any black, I'm out of it so I'm going to use brown. Here's a look at my uh, orientation that I'm using. You'll see I have the uh, most negative point here at the top and then what I'm going to do is uh, cut these leads somewhere right in here maybe about a quarter of an inch or so out from uh, each individual capacitor use the uh, coil method and uh, solder on the leads and uh, we'll punch a hole here in the bottom of the uh, cardboard box or drill a hole and we still got to put the uh, bracket on and uh, use some epoxy here and get this box uh, tightened up a bit. Okay, one down and uh, we'll go ahead and get the uh, others here. And uh, wrapping up here with the uh, last one. Let me get this aluminum uh, heat sink off. You guys saw me soldering there very close to the uh, components. I've had these for many, many years. They still come in handy. I was at uh, rather high heat, and uh, you can see my lead lengths were extremely uh, short, so I wanted to make sure I didn't create any damage, and uh, these definitely uh, work well. Let's uh, test the components here real fast, and uh, just make certain that all the uh, caps are in uh, good health. Okay, this first one here is in uh, great shape, just under uh, one microfarad. Let me uh, run through the rest of these. If anything jumps out, I'll let you guys know. With the uh, last one tested here, everything's uh, well within spec. They look good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, place a little uh, heat shrink here. I'll go ahead and take my uh, torch here and just heat these up. Okay, we're getting closer there, and uh, you do see I got all the uh, components facing uh, one direction. 
so we can see those for a future reference and um, I think my lead dressing will be just fine and uh, that does just fit inside uh, this box you guys recall I added one additional capacitor that was not part of the original capacitor bank um, just to remove some of the clutter from the uh, chassis okay I got the uh, hole drilled there for the uh, leads to come through and I've marked my uh, location here for my uh, curtain rod clamp that I'll use as a uh, supporting mechanism back to the chassis here. A little quick setting epoxy there from HF and um, we've got that attached now. We'll let it go ahead and set up here for another uh, 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll go ahead and get these ears attached here in the box uh, glued up tight except of course the uh, re-entry point here at the top. Here's a uh, look at the uh, capacitor bank completed and I tried to uh, reproduce that logo as well. It was rather faded and uh, took a shot of it on the uh, flatbed scanner so uh, quality's not that great. But um, you know you can make it out if you look close enough and it definitely gives it that uh, vintage look. So. Uh, Pretty cool reproduction box, and uh, you can see I've got six point one microfarad caps in here. Let me get this uh, reinstalled into the uh, chassis here. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing mounted, and hopefully I didn't make a mistake and everything lines up well. So that's where it uh, mounts. Let me uh, get the fasteners in and we'll take a closer look at it. With the capacitor bank back in the radio, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, tie-ins here to the locations that are uh, accessible at this time that I've actually worked. Uh, some being here on the uh, resistor uh, network board and uh, some other uh, locations. So uh, let me get started here and I'll uh, show an update here when I get this concluded. Okay guys, best I can tell, all my uh, tie-in points are now complete for uh, this particular uh, resistor network. Uh, pretty tedious actually, but uh, I think I've got everything uh, tied in and it matches the uh, schematic. I've checked twice and I'll check uh, three times because, uh, you know, it's easy to make mistakes. You guys have seen that in my uh, prior videos. And up next, uh, we'll go ahead and start this next resistor network and get all these uh, resistors replaced in this one cap and uh, do the tie-ins here. And uh, once we get that complete, uh, we don't have a heck of a lot left. I want to save the uh, coils and the uh, variable capacitors for last as well as the uh, tuning condenser. So, um, so far, so good. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, apply some power to this thing within the next uh, week and uh, bring it up for the uh, first time.